It's me, Mario. I think he's talking about me. Hello. Okay, here we go. Back to Bagbk Tomero. Sixty stars. So bright and colorful. I ain't the happy. I'm feeling the glad to got the sunshine in the bag. I didn't even do Thwomp. Like I said, if uh, some people have submitted, like, potential analog control fixes for Mario 64 DS, and I plan on checking those out when I'm done with this one, and uh, I would do more of the DS version. If if it works well enough for me to play. You know, we've been over this so many times. A lot of people have... You know... A lot of people got really salty. A lot of people were upset that I switched. But I would say also... That... You know, if you watched my stream long enough and, and you know who I am and you've... Enjoyed the stuff I've done for you. Or at the very least, you don't... You- you watch to the point where you don't hate me. Which is- which is fine. Either way, I'm happy. And I'm just, you know, I try my best to do what I can to make everybody happy. But, uh, as I've said before, I have to- I have to be happy with what I'm playing, otherwise it's just gonna be a shit show. That's- that's number one, that's the most important thing. Unless it's like, a 15 minute stream of a game on a Sunday stream. Wrong button. Fuck. I always do that. So, you know, for the, the people that wanted the DS version, I, I said this before, I'm, I'm with you. I would have preferred to play the DS version, but I wasn't feeling it. However, if any of these fixes do work, I have no problem playing more Mario 64 on the DS version and checking out all the minigames and stuff. So... You know, that's not... That's not necessarily gone for good. Cause I- <laughs> FUCK! My own fault. Mamma mia. I think the real issue here is, uh... People like to take sides. There's a very big side mentality. Like, you have to be do or die one side. I like both. I like both games. I like the DS version because it's got all the extra stuff and the mini games and it looks better. But I like this version because it just plays better and also the nostalgia. So I don't really, you know, I think I think it's totally fine to revisit to potentially revisit both of them. It's just a shame that I couldn't have done the 64 uh the DS one as planned. But we'll see. A couple people were nice enough to email me and say, Vin, don't worry about it. It's fine. And I was just like, yeah, I know. But, you know, people... People wanted the DS version. And some other people were helpful enough to say, Vin, I think I have a fix. Which is cool. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's that. God, you see how bad I'm playing now? This would have been ten times worse. Double jump is good enough. I find it fascinating how speedrunners have this down to a science. Where for them it's just like, oh, this is a double jump because this is the exact amount of height that Mario does with a double jump.
I like how I'm just not getting one-ups. For whatever reason. There it is. Well, muscle memory is 100% how people get so fucking ridiculously good at video games. Well, no, no, it's not 100%. I mean, it takes a lot of... It takes a lot of instinct that you build up over time. It takes a lot of quick reaction time. It takes a lot of, like, I think intelligence to figure out, like, when to use certain things. In this game, it would be jumps, but in other games, it would be, like, attacks and... I mean, speedrunners are the perfect example of combining all that stuff, but muscle memory is, I think, a huge part of it. L let me rephrase that. I think muscle memory is... is most of it. And then the rest of it is applying that to on-the-fly thinking. I wanna boing. Let me boing, bro. I need to boing! Let me boing! I like how I said intelligence and a couple people are giving me shit. What did you want me to say? Heart? What is this, Captain Planet? Choke... I'm about to choke a monkey out. I like how the monkey was given. Like, there's not a lot of, like, textures that are well-defined in this game. A lot of very simple, like, polygons with simple textures on them. But this monkey has a well-defined ass. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was that was that one of those invisible walls that I heard so much about? Where is the bomb fella? Danger, strong ghosts. <laughs> Gusts. The wind makes a comfy ride. What if all wind is just ghosts? No. Oh, I just saw Maro for a second. I saw low polygon Mario. Second thought, maybe we shouldn't do this level anymore. Yeah, hurricanes are like the spirits. Like, what happens is annually there's a spirit buildup in a certain region. And then those spirits turn into hurricanes, of course. Uh, a tornado is a bunch of repressed sexual energy from, from spirits turned into a very strong funnel of of, like, sex... sex motion. Fuck. Rattlesnake. 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 Fuck. Someone in chat said that this sounds like Rattlesnake, and now I can't unhear that. 
Rattlesnake. Yeah, and, and again, I have a, a slight delay on my voice because of my software compressor. I still haven't bought a hardware one. I, I just... I mean, I have suggestions. I had gear and a couple people help me out, which was really nice, but it's, it's really hard to figure out, like, oh, I'm gonna buy this piece of equipment and then probably get stuck in a loop of non-working equipment for an extended period of time. This monkey needs to shut the fuck up. When I say non-working, I mean stuff that doesn't work exactly how I want it to. I'm very specific on how I, I want my... my, um, streams to sound. You don't need a hardware compressor for zero latency. Yeah, I mean, Desert, we tried a couple of things, but it, it always just turned into a problem, sadly. Let's see what the fuck is going on with the monkey. I don't remember how to do this star. Can't you take a joke? Tell you what, I'll give you... Uh, let's do a trade. I'll give you something good. What are we doing here? Oh yeah. This monkey's gone to heaven! No, he's, he's dead. Maybe there's a way I can get down there without falling off the mountain? Right? I mean... That would be cool if I could just, just jump down. Grab that nice star right there. That's the one, right? Yep. Oh, there we go. No fall damage, too. Uh, Alright, I, I think I've had enough of this level. This, this level, for some reason, just gives me the jimmies. Strange about that clock. As you jump inside, watch the position of the big hand. Oh, look what I found here, Mario! Catch. So many random toads have just random stars. I'm at the point now where I'm I'm believing there to be a great toad spiracy. I have a feeling that they're complicit with Bowser, and they just let this happen. And they're trying to save face by giving Mario a star. 
Meanwhile, they're the ones who are actually doing the footwork. You know, Goombas are too... Well, they're too limited in mobility. Coopers are just dumb. So it's the Toads. They have the, the emotional... <laughs> they have the emotional maturity, and they know what they like sexually to please Bowser. I, I just want to, like, I just want to do this. Oh, there it is. You just have to mash. You just have to mash. Okay. Alright, I want to show you guys a trick. So, well, well, first, for anyone who's never played this game... This music will go up forever. I forget the name of it. It's, it's, uh... It's a trick. Hans Zimmer uses this in, uh, a couple of Christopher Nolan's movies, by the way. The musical trick, where it sounds like it's ascending forever. But yeah, this- this is just going to... That's just gonna go on forever. So... You need 70 stars to do this. Or... You can just cheese it. I've never done the cheese before, but we're, we're about to find out. <laughs> Here it is! There's the cheese. It's the shepherd's tone, that's the name of it. And that's- that's Bowser, that's final Bowser. But yeah, you- you are absolutely not supposed to be able to do that. Accurately, I can recreate that. Never mind. You know what? I'm good. I did it. I'm fine. I'm happy. Talk or rainbow. Actually, there's there's another level in here, isn't there? Yeah, there's this one. It's another um, flight level. We'll do this first. Got a bomb, fella. This is the same company that handles the uh, cannon travel in Secret of Mana. If the game still says I'm playing Super Metroid, refresh. Uh, I, I updated it. If it's not updating properly, then it's, it's something on Twitch's end. Hang on, let me, let me refresh and find out. Because every time I go, well, sometimes I make mistakes. No, it's, it says Super Mario 64 on my end. Ah! <laughs> 
Super Metroid 64. Oh, that was my favorite Metroid. I also liked Kid Icarus 64 and Burger Time GameCube. Yeah, that's definitely a series. Beside uh, Mike Tyson not coming back, which I think is just a sin. But that definitely a Nintendo character that has been neglected the most. People complain about Captain Falcon and, and Pitt. But, I mean, where the fuck is Mike Tyson? But sorry, I, I've, I've already talked about that a number of times. I repeat myself a lot. Because... There's always new people on the stream. I repeat myself a lot. Because there's always new people joining every moment. I repeat myself a lot. Because there's always new people joining every moment. I repeat my... But... The, um, the thing is... With Burger Time... You know, that was a whole food franchise that Nintendo had going with burgers. Burg could have been bigger than Mario. And we might be playing Burger Game right now, if it weren't for the popularity of Mario and, and the, the relative non-popularity of Burger Time. Burger Time was Data East? Oh, fuck. I always thought that was a Nintendo game for some reason. Okay, I'm having a little trouble seeing where I'm going now. Oh god, oh my god. I got Jim Jams. I remember when this game came out, the potential of the N64 was, like, unlimited. You know, I, I was, like... I was blown away by Mario's transition into 3D. And I couldn't wait to see what they were gonna do with Zelda. I remember the early Zelda 64 footage. And how terrible it looked. Well, looked amazing for a little while, and now it looks terrible, especially compared to Ocarina. Ocarina had style. But Zelda 64? Zelda 64 just looked... bland. And then, you know, we ended up getting a lot of N64 games that I think did a really good job. No! played myself yet again. Here was one of the Zelda 64 screenshots, yeah, and there's a, there's a bunch more. With just, uh, and this is like further along to... Ocarina. Let me show you a couple things. Let me show you the first couple of screenshots. Because this one actually kind of looks like... Ocarina. But there was some really not great looking like super early beta shit that looked like hot assholes oh here's one of them that's not even no it's more that's still ocarina ish same for this one um I can't find what I'm looking- oh, oh, here it is, here it is, here's what Link looked like for a little while. Look at that shield. 
I guess they liked the reflection technology on Metal Link. And they were like, listen, sons, we, we got to do this. Because we have the technology. We can make it look like it's, it's metal. And then you even have this here. So they went, like, they went mental with the, uh, with the reflections. Mario's just out. I don't like it talking about the Zelda. You fuck. I don't know if, if there's people in the chat who have not seen that. The very, very original, like, tech demo for Zelda 64. But, it, it, yeah, it really came a long way. By the time Ocarina came along... I mean, I remember the steady and slow doling out of information about Zelda 64. But... I mean, I didn't care. It just looked awesome regardless. I was like, look at the reflections! It's like real metal! Do I do this again? Man, do I hate this. How did I handle the impending release of Zelda 64, of Ocarina? Um, between that and Turok 2, that was when I had SATs, so like standardized, standardized tests. I was so excited for these games that I actually did poorly on my SAT. well, I studied less. It actually interfered with my tests. Or it was- it might have been pre-SATs, I don't remember, but regardless, it was very, very difficult. It didn't interfere too much, but it definitely cut into my- my daydreaming. And it was like, you know, the internet was just a thing. So, looking up any bit of information I could about both of those games was more important than studying. that and looking up porn of Tifa from Final Fantasy 7. As we all did. As we all did. D and don't give me no never mind that you don't know what I'm talking about. I was 13, son. 13! See them boobies? The BBC would like to apologize for the preceding message from streamer Vinesauce Vinny. He has no affiliation with BBC, Twitch.tv, or YouTube. Your money will be refunded. Please check the mail in five to six weeks. Da, 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 da. Damn, Cloud. No, 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 the stream has become far too silly, and must be ended now. It's this, it's this level. It's this... I think it's, this level is making me insane. Talking about my crush on Tifa? Fuck. What about the footage of Zelda on GameCube? Well, first we got Zelda, which was not a term of endearment for many, myself included. I, I wanted to give it a chance. When Wind Waker was the Zelda we got, I was really... Mm, I, wasn't, I wasn't crazy. I remember that E3 very well, and it didn't... It didn't really do it for me. That was fucking nice horse. Horse cocks. 
Wind Waker, when it was first revealed, didn't blow me away. It looked cool. To some extent, but the internet was very disappointed, and I wanted something more like Ocarina. I wanted something more realistic using the GameCube's power. And, uh, we didn't get that. Oh my god. Wow. I am very lucky. Of course, Wind Waker ended up being amazing. And I love it. And I fucking... I treasure that game so much. I love Wind Waker. But I also... You know, I was on the, the, the anti-hype. The anti-hype train was unfortunately rolling pretty hard when Zelda was announced. Whew, thank God. Um, but then there's also the other game when it was just Legend of Zelda, that one trailer, which we've spoken about many times here on this Vine Sauce stream. When Twilight Princess was first announced, that trailer, where everyone went absolutely insane in the crowd, blades will bleed, blades will bleed, shields will shatter, but as the light fades, what's the last part? I got all of it but the last part. As the light fades, a hero rises, and it had like the Conan the Barbarian music. But as the light fades, you get fatter. No, 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 it wasn't a rhyme. As the light fades, the cocks get fatter. No, 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 no. That, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, and then... Mario... I mean, Shigeru Miyamoto came out with a sword and shield. Well, did you... we're gonna need to see that in slow motion, because that made no fucking sense, but was amazing. Also, this is probably the hardest level in the game. Just because death is around every corner. As the light fades, will the hero rise again, or will darkness reign? Yeah, that trailer was fucking mind-blowing. And then we got Twilight Princess. Which was... really good. <laughs> but it tried real hard to just recreate the feelings of Ocarina without adding as much to the formula as, say, Breath of the Wild did. But it was- it was good. I streamed uh, Twilight Princess HD, and I have very, very fond memories of that stream. And I really... I think it's it's a great game. It's a great traditional 3D Zelda game. I would say Wind Waker is somewhat non-traditional. That was the stream where you predicted Breath of the Wild. But I mean, when it comes to, like, games that I, I kind of imagined as a kid, you know, I imagined what the Mario sequel would look like and what I wanted from it, and it was definitely not Sunshine, but I'm glad Sunshine was the one because it was, it was great. I thought about what Half-Life 2 might look like. I thought we would, for sure, be back inside the laboratories of the Lambda facility of Black Mesa. But that didn't happen. I thought about Metroid 64. I remember thinking Castlevania 64 was going to be mind-blowing. Oh man, was I ever wrong on that one.
Vinny, did you know that you actually predicted the fire starter in Sun and Moon during your Robobot streams? No. What did I say? Did I say it was a fire cat? Yeah, they're meh. Castlevania 64 game and Legacy of Darkness. They're just fine. Got a lot of problems. It's going to be a cat on fire, is that what I said? Predict the starters for the Switch Pokemon game. Alright, um... It's gonna be... Alright, so the Leaf starter... Sorry, that, <laughs> that... That, of course, is the element. Leaf. It will be... Um... It will be... Give me a minute here. It'll be... a lizard. Because... Have they done... Have they done lizard? Trico? Several? Alright, we're running out of shit now. Um, okay. It'll be... a bottle of soda. Okay. Fire is going to be a bird, and water is going to be oh, well, there's already Torchic. Oh, fuck. Um. Okay, so then fire will have to be... Oh man, this is hard. They, they've done everything. Now that I think about it, they pretty much have done every possible animal. I can't just say fire cat. Well, maybe. It's not like they didn't have fire cat before. Yeah, this is hard, guys. I'm sorry. I, I I can't. Shit. A fire car. I at least want to get a couple stars on this level. It's frustrating as fuck, and there's a lot to it, but... At, you know, at the very least, I want to see it. And, and remember why I hated it. Has there been a fire fish? Like, I'm trying to think of the stupidest, most anachronistic Pokémon. Oh, come on! No? All right, fire fish. But the twist is that it's like a mammal. You know, so like a dolphin or a whale, it'll actually come up and... You know, it, it can breathe on land. So it's not specifically tied to the ocean. Yeah, fire dolphin. There you go, fire dolphin. You heard it here. There's your inside scoop on Pokemon, um, Blump, and Pokemon Blump and Felch. Vinny doesn't know what anachronistic means. Anachronistic. 
belonging or appropriate to an earlier period, especially so as to cons seem conspicuously old-fashioned. I guess you're right, I don't. Huh. Something that is not in its correct historical or chronological time. An error in chronology. Well, shit. All right. I admit defeat. No, that's good. That's good. I'm glad to learn. I'm happy to learn. No, not alliteration. I think, uh, honestly, I think Joe and, and, and I both used that word wrong in the studio. Anachronistic. <laughs> that's, uh, or, or maybe he was using it right and I, I gleaned the wrong definition from it. Please tell me I'm using the word gl glean correctly. Which, as we all know, is a mix of green and, uh, lizard. See, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so I was using the word anachronistic improperly, but, uh, you know, it's... I, I don't I don't mind learning in front of a couple thousand people. I think that's something that... I think it's good. I mean, you have to fucking swallow your pride a little bit, but as soon as you realize that in the grand scheme of the millions and billions of stars that exist in our Milky Way, in our universe, that you and your little fragile ego don't really mean a whole lot, then it's time to actually start getting shit done, you know, and learning some real shit. Like what the word anachronistic means! No! 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 How did I go through the middle? Mamma mia! Let's go! Oxymoronic. Well, you got the moronic part right. So back to Pokemon. See, I like doing that every time. That's that's part of the ritual. That's a good luck ritual, getting burned and collecting the coins. No, um... Yeah, Fire Dolphin. Uh, I would say... Green... The, the green element will be soda. But what's water gonna be? Water is gonna be... Like a cloud. Like a rain cloud. It's gonna be a cute cloud that rains. But green... No, I, I kinda want a good one. I wanna take, like, a legit guess. I wanna take a legit guess, uh, that, that exists. There's already a cloud Pokémon. A sentient cloud. What's the name of it? Cumulus? Cat's form? Fuck. Thought I was being clever. Um... What about a new type? Love type. Only love can overcome... I don't know, wind. No, this- this is really, really tough. The only thing I'm really, in any way, shape, or form, proud of, and I know it's the stupidest, most oxymoronic, eh, thing that I've said tonight, and it's- it's the- the fire dolphin. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be... I don't think that's gonna be a good guess. Yeah. 
teleport, Mario. Fucking hell, fuck this level. Come back to that one. It's not, it's not that hard. I mean, it's just, it's tricky. Some of the platforming on that level can be a little tough. Also, um, you can freeze. There's a really amazing skip on this level that you can do that um, was found recently that is apparently unrecreatable. Or something like that. There was like a speed run technique that was found. I watched some video about it. At, at some point, they just ran out of new music, and they were just like, "Yep, yeah, we got, we got, uh, we got a song. You can put that on all of the final floor of the game." They'll love it. Hey, at least it was my own fault. If Vinny does the $1,000 warp by accident, I will shit a cock. Someone in chat just said that just now. Okay, well, the clock is frozen. Someone in chat just said, what track should we use for these levels? Eh, just throw a uh, hillbilly fuckfest in there. I like that. That's a good name for this track. Thank you for that contribution, chat member. I appreciate that. Hillbilly fuckfest. It's like a fuck festival. I'm going for the one thousand dollar warp. Here it is. I think you have to do it here, right? Like there's a spot here that you can. You get stuck on one of these things and it, like, just teleports you up? Something like that. Roughly speaking. I'm about to earn a thousand dollars tonight, folks. There's a bounty on finding out how to do this warp. Here's the warp. Okay, let's see. That was posted by A Dog One Two Three ASAS. Where no strangers to love, you know the rules and. It's a, genuinely a good song. Ten years later, I'm still getting Rickrolled. Beautiful. Ten years ago, lads. Ten years ago when Rick Rolling first started and no one knew what it was. Maybe a little over ten years ago. 
my uh, my friends had some birthday party. Well, I say friends, but only a couple people did I know well. Mostly acquaintances. Friends is a very easy word to throw around, but... You know, extended friends, you could say. Um... We went to the city. Karaoke was had. And I, being the meme lord dumbass that I am, decided it would be a great idea to rickroll everybody by singing that song, Karaoke. And at the time, no one knew that it was a meme, really. Not, you know, people at a bar in New York City. So, they just thought I was some weird, skinny, facial hairless... ...bean. Doing a really dumb, obscure 80s pop song. Well, not, not really obscure, but outdated. Esoteric, whatever you want to say. And that's probably the wrong use of that word, too. Oh, yeah! And so, I... ...only had a couple people that knew what I was doing. I'm gonna go for the red coins. In that case, it was an anachronism. Oh shit, yeah! I was doing... Yeah, I was an ana anachronistically doing a song from the wrong time period. Yeah, this- this is cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't wanna- you don't wanna go too fast, Tails. Yeah, cause if you go too fast, you end up blowing your own wad. You wouldn't want to blow your own wad now, would you, Tails? Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, get up there! Get up! Fucking skunt! <sighs> Is this recommended to be completely slowed down? I think that that's or, or not completely slow. I think it's supposed to be stopped, stopped or faster than that because that is making it very difficult to jump on those platforms and then correct any any problems. What if I find a new warp, a, the scrote warp? My streams will be studied by by speedrunners for generations to come. I mean, why not, right? Studied for not, like how not to do a speed run. It's going real fast now. Yeah, the camera in this game does not want to be your friend most of the time. Yep, 
Yeah, the, the camera is very, um... ...stubborn. And not subservient. Get out of here, shit breath. Mario zoom out. Yeah, Mario zoom out's not so bad. Ah, yes, I can remember. It's a, a little bit more fluid than the other ones. Some, a really good video. Someone in chat just said, don't have a cow, man. There was a really good video that was going around about The Simpsons I talked about. If you haven't seen it, it's just how The Simpsons fell from grace. As a very, very filthy casual Simpsons fan, I, I couldn't really tell you, you know, the specifics. I, very few episodes of The Simpsons have ever been watched by myself. But it was still a very interesting video, nonetheless. I talked about it on stream the other day. I like learning. I like that you can sometimes learn on YouTube. It's not just all, like, it's a prank, bro. Uh... Or eat a dick, bro. Or... You know, someone trying to advertise. Yo, you should check out that shirt. Uh, nope. If there is anyone in chat that is an especially big Simpsons fan, how does the Simpsons movie rank for you? Six out of ten, seven out of ten, okay. Homie out of ten. Oh. Okay, but boring. I guess some would say that by the time they made the movie, the best years of The Simpsons were already kind of done. I'm surprised they only got one movie, though. And I'm, I'm surprised South Park only ever did one movie. Like, they... You know, the popularity of South Park remained fairly consistent and in, in many ways saved Comedy Central. And, um... Yeah, it's just fucking massive. Still. Maybe not as massive, but um, I'm surprised they didn't... They didn't do that. Stick of truth. And they're also doing, um... Yeah, you, you can't forget that they're doing... ...the second game. Yeah, it's a shame about the newest season. I didn't really care for it that much. It, it had so much potential, but it ended up getting... It, it ended up getting a little bit away from... ...what I think would have made it... ...even better. I don't know exactly what that is. What's the name of the new South Park game? Oh, it's called the Fractured Butthole. Uh, sorry, Fractured Butthole. Speaking of buttholes...
the uh, YouTube adpocalypse, I found a, um, a rather interesting thing. So that's 70. Bowser is now... Bowser is no, now killable. Let me show you a thing. So... the YouTube... advertiser bot, or the algorithm, or whoever's manually checking YouTube videos, I believe is looking for content that would be appropriate for five-year-olds for advertisements. Now, this- this is obviously taking it to its extreme, and I think there's more to it than that, for sure. But, I also believe that if that's a general rule of thumb, um, and, and they are trying to base advertisement content on five-year-olds, then I have the question, what do five-year-olds buy? And also, how is it that something like The Walking Dead and South Park can have a lot of ad space on them? It's almost like... It's almost like people still watch... ...things that have curses in them. So I would say most of YouTube is not appropriate for a five-year-old, because that's... I mean, what... what... Okay, different parenting. Obviously. But, if you're gonna say, like, is the word butthole inappropriate? Because there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of people who have had ads on their videos, like, revoked. And there's actually... Did you know that there's a blacklist? For a lot of YouTubers? Meaning... You can upload a video of you just- just saying gibberish, like, not even real words, and you'll immediately get flagged. And within, like, ten minutes of you uploading your video, it will be deemed unadvertiser-friendly. There is a couple of people that proved this. There's a couple of videos about it. So, it's a really interesting time right now for, um... YouTube deciding the fate of, you know, the way people make money on YouTube. Well, you know, there's a couple people I follow on Twitter that are saying, like, I uploaded a video, it has literally zero curses, but it got flagged, as well as, like, ten of my other videos. So yeah, it's- it's a little weird. Uh, it makes me wonder, like, is the five-year-old thing legit, or is it just... Here's people who have historically had some bad words on their channel and potential controversy. Remove ads. Ads gone. Thin White Duke in chat asks, what's your favorite early Beatles album? I would say... What's the one with, I need you? Is that help or hard day's night? I always get the two confused. I also really like, um, with the Beatles. It's a good one. If you're talking like, pre-rubber soul. B-E-E-T-L-E-S suck. I agree. I'm not a fan, they... You know... I don't really like bugs to begin with, but... Well, I, I understand, here's the thing, without going into the full details, it's because I'm sure if you... If you know the information about the Adpocalypse, then you know 
you know that something fucky's going on, and that there's some specific things happening. But, I'll say it's not really fair for people that put, like, hundreds of hours of work per month into their YouTube channel, and they have their, their revenue revoked because of some faulty algorithm, or some potential reporting, even if they're not cursing. Or being political. That's... It's just a shame because it's happened to a number of people. And, and... It's being pointed out more and more. I hate this level. And I'm also... I, I gotta admit, by the way, I'm like really tired. I woke up... A couple hours earlier than usual today. So I'm, I'm just about done. I don't think I'm gonna beat the game tonight, but I probably should, right? I mean... Especially if I plan on doing Mario 64 DS. It might be a good idea to... finish this one semi-early. And that way I can do stuff in the DS version and it wouldn't feel too redundant. I- Wow, that was awesome! <laughs> well the debate of automation. Like, I'm all for the idea of... Like, if, you, if you're gonna automate stuff so that there's no ads, that's fine. Maybe, you know, go by keywords or... Um... There, there's gotta be... I understand that there's, there's too many videos on YouTube uploaded every day. And if you have, like, people uploading the entirety of Star Wars, that... You know, I get it. I get why they want to have a system in place. Um, if you, you know, showing some really graphic, disgusting shit, maybe it's a fuck. Maybe, maybe there is some utility for having <laughs> for having um, an automatic system in place because you you cannot hire a staff of people that can watch every single piece of content that gets uploaded to YouTube. I, I understand that. I understand that advertisers like Coke don't want their shitty product next to a Chechnyan rebel getting his head sliced off. Sorry for the graphic imagery, but it's true. I, I understand that. You know, I, I get that there's... There's plenty of reasons why there needs to be some kind of system in place. Otherwise, it would just be fucking complete chaos and porn and, and fucking gore and, and you know what I mean? And that's a real video, by the way, and, and it's like... I, I understand the, the desire, but then you have false flags that can't be disputed. You have people losing money, people losing their channels, people who can't say what they want to say. And people who have to, like, now stop making videos as much because they don't have any money to do so. And, you know, maybe the systems need to be looked at. Maybe things need to be talked about internally and discussed. And not just, pre like, pretend that there's not a problem when you have people that have no... Yeah, people who might say the word shit from time to time, but otherwise there's no problem with their videos. And this isn't even about me. I say fuck, I say cunt, all the time. I play games where you shoot people in the head, and, and sometimes... Sometimes they can get kind of gory. If you want to restrict some of my videos... Vappy already does, on- on purpose. <laughs> oh, alright, this is fine. That's just my best assessment of the situation. I'm trying my best, guys. I do have a, a perspective from being, you know, on the other side, but I also would not want to make my entire life about my YouTube channel. So it becomes... No, Vappy doesn't censor, but he'll, he'll tag them as you know, like, videos that should be age-restricted. 18 plus. I think that that would be a good solution, right? I mean... 
maybe you can classify channels into age brackets, like 18 plus, um, you know, 21 plus for like liquor and, and, you know, uh, um, cigarette advertisements, I don't know. And it would be like your responsibility to tag your stuff appropriately. And if not, then you, the community submits a tag. And then if you're 18 plus, you know, or adult only or whatever, you get different advertisers. Maybe you, Pornhub will advertise on your video if you have adult only content where you review dildos. Hello, and welcome to the dildo review. I'm sure there's plenty of adult advertisers or, or like companies that sell things that aren't directed towards babs. Just like on TV at late night, you know, sometimes late night like softcore programs <laughs> have different advertisers. Cartoon Network has advertisements to, for kids. So maybe before you get, how about this, before you're approved for ads, Maybe it will be a good idea for, um, after you make a couple videos, the community or a YouTube moderator reviews your channel, and then, you know, it's your responsibility to tag your videos properly, and you could lose your channel if you don't. I don't know. It, it seems like that could be some solution. I guess there wouldn't be a person. There's just too many channels to keep up with for a person to do that. Or maybe the system could start ta- ooh. Um, okay. Based on, like, captions and keywords and stuff, then your videos can be, like, classified as... PG-13, or rated R, or whatever, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to figure something out, because, like, TV has different advertisers that will take certain slots. Like, you're not gonna see advertisements for, like... <laughs> ...for certain things. Like, Bab Toys. While you're watching The Walking Dead. It's better than what's going on now, which is people are just being claimed, and that's it. No, sorry, you can't, you can't advertise. And for people that say, you know, fuck them, you know, YouTube's not a job. All right, all right, fair enough. Listen, that's that's how you feel. That's how you feel. I still think it takes a lot of work. This has been a, a repeat statement for me. I've said this a couple times, but. In some ways, there's less job security. There's no health care. You can lose your revenue at any time. There's no guarantee that you're gonna make any money. And you have to work really hard. Otherwise, people start forgetting about your channel. You have to edit really well to distinguish yourself from everyone else out there. You have to do your research. I mean, it, it can be tough to actually find a place in this now oversaturated YouTube world. Is it a real job? I don't know, that's up to you. Is it easy? I don't think so. I think it's hard if you're gonna try to make a living out of it. I think it can be really tough. Maybe not even for me. De definitely not for me. Not, not for me compared to many others. I mean, streaming is still my, my, uh, main thing. But, it's also like if, you know, if movies didn't make back money, then you wouldn't get the movies that you like. If actors made no money, then you wouldn't get the movies with those actors in them. Like, so, I mean, the entertainment field is real.
and the way entertainment has changed with YouTube and the internet, it's not like a, a studio is paying you forty million dollars to do a short film on YouTube or something. You know what I mean? It's it's you're responsible for your own thing, and the birth of user made entertainment is is amazing. I mean, I don't have cable anymore. I just watch YouTube and you know some HBO, some Netflix, but mainly YouTube or just videos that people make. I like that. So I don't want to see that threatened. I don't want to see people's channels like, you know, if I'm watching a channel I really like, I want to see more videos, not less. If Red Letter Media had to work at McDonald's, those hack frauds probably still wouldn't review Dunkirk. All right, never mind. I'll stop. Here we go. Here it is. Not quite. Bowser is anachronistic? I think he is. Maybe he's a bit oxymoronic for trying to defeat Mario. Uh, Bowser is not gay, but twenty dollars is twenty dollars. For those just joining, that was on a shirt at, on my vacation. Watch the earlier part of the stream for context. He's an esoteric, anachronistic, oxymoronic. Thimble dick. Sorry, fart knuckle. I need that. I need that tail. I like how this Bowser is, is like rainbow to appear more powerful and threatening. Meanwhile, it's, it achieves for me the exact opposite effect. I can't believe I'm doing this. Got any kerns in them fire? Whoa! Oh, God damn it, man. So I thought I was going to get like a hundred stars before I beat Bowser, but we've seen all the levels and I'll tell you what, if I end up doing, like I said earlier, if I end up doing Mario 64 DS, we'll be able to see some of the other stuff that, that I haven't done. But for the most part, I mean, you, oh, okay. 
for the most part, we we've, we've seen the game, we've experienced it. We saw what Tri World. I did that, I think, last time. I believe I've done one floor per stream of this game. M more or less. Like, mostly. Fucking hell, I'm really not good at this. By the way. It's kind of amazing how little fanfare there is about this fight. In subsequent Mario games in 3D, the fights would be these, like, tremendous things, like Bowser climbing up buildings, Bowser doing, like, insane shit on the way to the fight. And in this one, it's just like... It, clown Vomit Bowser has arrived, has logged in. That's- that's gotta be it. Oh, come on! Oh, okay, mate. Alright, you uh, fucking twat. You're a fucking twat, you know that, mate. You're a fat knuckled, white-fisted, fuck-faced, what? Bowser, please. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Can't be. You really beat me, Mario. I gave those troops power, but now it's fading away. I can see peace returning to the world. I can't stand it. Mm, it's not over yet. Come on, troops. Let's watch the ending together. Hmm? Troops, let's watch the ending together? I guess I just never questioned that. That's a kind of a bizarre thing to say at the end there. That's- that's all of us. Maybe we're his troops. So yeah. Honestly, I still love this game. I- I don't think it aged as well as Mario Sunshine. I- I like Sunshine better. For- for nostalgic reasons, I love Mario 64. But, as a game, the experience of Sunshine just was more fun for me. Uh... Petch has been rescued.
voice acting in a Nintendo it's game? Thanks to you. Thank you, Mario. We have to do something special for you. We have to touch polygons. Here we go! Listen, everybody. Let's bake a delicious cake for Mario. Only cake is the why. Shigeru Miyamoto. Yeah, for Nintendo's first big 3D game, you know, aside from Star Fox, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about. This is such a, a success to the, to the point where it holds up 21 years later and it's still fun. The camera kind of fucking sucks a little here and there, but it's still just great. Getting the stars is addictive. There's still a lot of little missions that I didn't do. Like, every level has so many stars to get. And uh, I apologize if I didn't do as many stars as you expected me to. But I felt like you know, we're good. I feel pretty good. I feel like I got my money's worth, so to speak. And um, considering a number of people are working on that DS analog fix, I may end up doing more. Do you get something if you gather all the stars? You get to uh, go to the roof, and you get to talk to Yoshi. And then you also get to um, get, like, as many one-ups as you can have. Vinny, have you heard about Bussy Bear? I have. It's a mascot, isn't it? In fact, I think I have a picture of Bussy Bear right here on my desktop someplace. I don't. I don't. I thought I did. I do. Hi, I'm Bussy Bear. Yeah, it's a mascot for uh, what? That's real. That's real. I had a few people tweet that to me. Thank you so much for playing my game. Thank you so much for to playing my game. Thank you so much. For two, playing a my game. Ma. You're welcome, Mario. That cake looks like instant, just fucking diabetes. It's so frostingy. There's a limit to how much frosting. I want on a cake. I, I like, I want a little frosting. Yes. I want some whipped cream, the icing, you know, everything is, is cool, but it's just, if it's too much, then it's just, it just becomes tough to finish eating. It's like too rich, man. It's too sweet. I did have some good fudge when I was down in, uh, on my vacation. That was cool. They had a orange, uh, creamsicle fudge. That made no sense, but was delicious. But it's just pure sugar. You have to, like, kind of have a nice balance, you know, between the sugar and the actual 
like cake. Step right up. What's your favorite cake? I'm a big fan of uh, just chocolate cake. There's so many good cakes in this world. I don't know. It's a hard choice, but, you know, maybe um, a cake like this, but with less and chocolate frosting. I, I don't know. It just depends, really. Step. So hang on a minute before I, I talk a little bit more about Mario 64. I want to. Check this out. Uh, National Express is the, like, that's the mascot. National Express have unknowingly named their mascot after some rude gay slang. That's the article. That's what it's called. And I don't know what that is. Hi, I'm, I'm Bussy Bear. Looks like buses. Oh my god. I mean, all they had to do was email, like, or not email, but like, before moving ahead, maybe just Google it. Just Google what it meant. Just <laughs> take five minutes, not even two minutes, less. But now it's memes, forever memes. Maybe that's exactly what they wanted. Maybe the memes are leading to increased business. I mean, listen, you never know. You never know. Also, uh, another quick thing. The other night while I was streaming Teletubby game, I said, OK, Google, look up nude Teletubbies. And Google Trends had marked, uh, as a result of that, an increase in searches for nude Teletubbies. I would like to let you know that I've spent the past couple of days thinking very deeply about the power that I hold on this stream. And I want you to know that one, I don't want it. I don't want the power, even though I just said, okay, Google look up nude Teletubbies. I don't want to be able to do that one. And two, part of me feels like part of me feels like if I'm going to use it, I should use it for good, right? If I already have it. Okay, Google, donate $5 to PCRF charity. I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> Does it? Should it? Maybe that's a little fucked up. Okay, donating money to the Bussy Foundation. Uh, listen, listen, this is all very silly. But I want you to know I really appreciate you sticking by and watching the uh the stream i know mario 64 means a lot to a lot of people i also know a lot of people stream mario 64 so it's it's a dime a dozen um like i said maybe that ds version will come along a couple people are working on that analog fix so you know there could be some more mario 64 in the near future which is why i'm glad i did 72 stars and not 100 and something i've said this before this game is a big part of, you know, me growing up. I got it when I was 11. Played the fuck out of it. I have a lot of fond memories of it. Um, figuring out how to get the stars with my friends and my cousin. And it, it's, again, not my favorite 3D Mario, but it's, uh, it's great. It's great. The N64 had a lot of great games. PlayStation and N64 were like, the coming of age consoles for a lot of people, myself included. And it, it really makes me think how many games actually made the transition to 3D successfully. Final Fantasy, Metal Gear, Mario. On just those two systems, a, a lot actually. F-Zero, well, I, I was always kind of doing that. Zelda. Um... And then PlayStation had its its whole new brand of stuff, but it was it was a good generation. I didn't have Sega, but I had N sixty four and PlayStation, and it was just a great time for games. There were so many every year, so many classic games were being released, and starting with this one for me, and then I got the PlayStation one probably like 
just six months after Final Fantasy VII came out, I think. I think. It's a little hazy. But really good time for games. Both systems had great fucking titles, and Medal of Honor was a really great first-person shooter. Goldeneye, um, Star Fox 64. The only problem was, for a long time, the N64 only had, like, this and Pilot Wings, which were great. Pilot Wings was really replayable for me. I used to just fly around and do nothing in particular. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the game. Play a gyrosco- uh, gyrocopter level until I ran out of gas. That was it. Just free roam. Pilot Wings was cool. But the rest of that year was kind of light on games. I think Star Wars Shadows of the Empire came out, but that ended up being a little disappointing. I didn't know it was disappointing at the time. That said, Mario 64 definitely kept me busy for a long time. And it was one of those games that was just infinitely replayable because you could get the stars in so many different ways and you could always find new ways to approach a star. So, yeah, definitely worth playing. Even if you've never had an N64, you never grew up with one. I still think it's one of those games like there's there's some games I'm ranting a bit. I will check the art in like a couple of minutes because I'm really tired. I want to go to bed. Um, My sleep schedule got set back like a couple hours or uh, set ahead, I should say. But I think there are a couple games that are historically really worth playing. Even if you don't have the nostalgia for them, I would say Metal Gear Solid, the original. This Ocarina of Time. If we're talking PlayStation and N64, I would say Banjo-Kazooie is a great one. Star Fox 64. Um, If you're going to do a Final Fantasy, any of the three, but I would recommend nine. You know, some games from these big series really were just incredible from like 96 to 2001, 2002. So it was definitely a good time and significant as Mario 64 was. They would just keep going on to top them. I mean, Sunshine, Galaxy. For me, that was the pinnacle. Like, you had Sunshine and then Galaxy were just like... Galaxy 2 as well were were the pinnacle of Mario. And then 3D Land on the DS was great. 3DS, I love that game. And then World felt a little sterile. Good, but really good. Not just good, but great. But still, maybe felt a little safe felt a little safe um <laughs> it's terrible I, I sterile and i like the taste but i i really i think um mario uh, odyssey is the the reason i played this is because of mario odyssey coming out soon and i can't fucking wait for mario odyssey because it's gonna be more like this and sunshine than anything we've seen in the past however many years. And I think this is my favorite type of 3D Mario. As much as I love Galaxy's format, I think this is still the open world, like find stars and, you know, find secrets and take your time and find whatever you want. That is just great. It's like a big scavenger hunt in these giant worlds. So I'm super excited for Odyssey. 64 is definitely the the choice if you're going to lead up to Odyssey. I would say if if you want to prepare for Odyssey, start with 64, then do Sunshine <clears throat> and then you're you're good. And then play Odyssey and then maybe save the galaxies for another time, but those are two classic fucking games I would recommend. That's another thing. If you never grew up with Gal- Mario Galaxy, you never played Mario Galaxy, that is a very significant Mario game. I think that should be played by like almost everybody if you have the means to do so. It's so good. Uh, I would love... Well, I can't really say that because I I have both games. I could play them at any time. But if they wanted to do a good collection for the Switch, the Galaxy Collection. Just put Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 on on a cartridge. 40 bucks. Perfect. And then it would be portable. 
and it will be good. Galaxy plus Sunshine. Whoa, hold up, hold up. If they did Galaxies 1 and 2 and Mario Sunshine, I would fucking die. That would be great. And that would be... Um... That would be great, and it would be it would be amazing to have that portably. That would not happen. What we'll get is GameCube Classic with Sunshine on it. They'll make five of those, and then they'll do Virtual Console for the Wii, and they'll release Galaxy for forty nine ninety nine, and then Galaxy Two separately for forty nine ninety nine. Also, I finally thought of what the grass Pokemon could be. It could be a grass scorpion. Uh, and it would have four tails. Like four stingers. And they could call it Forpion. Wouldn't be a bug type. Grass. And the tails would be made of um, leaves. Just blades of grass. <sighs> There's already a scorpion Pokemon. Scoruppy. I guess it's bug type. Fuck. Sab said did it. This is like seriously, this is the exact same thing as Sab said did it. I can't come up with anything unique because everything's taken. I guess soda soda bottle it is. How about um a fucking microphone? Has there been a microphone Pokemon? I have to Google this now. Microphone Pokemon. Okay, no. Spikerophone. It's a microphone, but it's made of spikes and it flies and has eyes. Mel Meloetta. Fuck. A gun. It's just a gun. It's a pistol. Gun Pokemon. Nintendo's probably not going to do that. They don't have the balls to do that, right? <laughs> I just Googled gun Pokemon, and this is what I got. This is one of the first results on Google. Fish gun. And then this from the escapist. My god, that looks like a Metal Gear. All right, listen, I'm I'm going to stop trying now. Hang on. What desert linked something? I really wish Twitch chat would just like when you scroll up, I wish it would just stop scrolling. Twitch staff, can you can you make that happen, please? So I don't have to download some fucking external chat program. Oh, it's it's this picture. Yep, that's the gun-based Pokemon. For when you don't feel like doing a Pokemon battle. All right, listen, I got to stop this. That was fun. Thank you again for watching. Mario 64, good times were had, and I will miss it and i'll look forward to potentially doing voice cracks but doing the uh ds version and then mario odyssey when that comes out in a couple months let's take a look at the art 